What children should know about money? By Antoinette Tsochova. You can call me Tony. Money definitely isn't everything, but it's very difficult to live well without understanding money. I believe that this information is really important for you. It is something that everyone should know. Sadly, it is not something that you are taught in school. Personally, I didn't have the chance to learn most of these things while I was young. My parents gave me a good baseline, but everything beyond that, I had to learn by myself. It ended up costing me a lot of time and effort, and I made a lot of a lot of mistakes. Hello, and welcome to my new series. My name is Antoinette, and I'm here to educate you a little on what money is generally all about. Once I had the opportunity, I told my daughter everything I know because I wanted to give her a head start. Instead of having to spend long years of figuring it out on her own, she can now build up on what I've told her. Thanks to this, she can get to where I was back then much sooner and since she will have more years to work with, she can be better off than me. Then she can do the same for her kids one day and they will be even better off. I believe that this is one of the best things a parent can do for their kids. I plan to release a new episode of this series every week and I highly advise you to watch it with your children or you the parents or at least watch it yourself and then share the information with them. Money is an essential part of the child's life. Most children treat money in a different ways. Some earn it, others save it, others collect it and some just love counting it. There is a lot that children can do with money, but some of your kids do not know the history of money. History of money Long before paper bills came into existence, did you know that they were means of trade? Before mommy and daddy were able to use money to pay your school fees, some of these means involved grain and shells. So, if you were born at that time, you would probably go to the market and say, I want to buy a chicken, but I only have three shells. Again, there is more to money than paper currency. Interesting questions you can ask your parents. How does the stock market work? How does a bank come up with the profit? What are those factors affecting price, demand and supply? Moving straight into business, let me ask a simple question. Have you traded your extra pencil for someone else's pencil eraser? If yes, then, believe me, you have taken part in probably the oldest form of trade, trade by barter. As long as you exchange goods for other goods, you have engaged in trade by barter. However, one of the problems that come up with your trade by barter is measuring the goods against the other goods. How does bartering work? Back then, People traded goods for other goods, like the child who traded a pencil for pencil eraser. It was going fine for a while until life started to get more complicated. One of the problems arose from the fact that the people started developing other skills and so could not exchange goods for goods as they used to. Take, for instance, a yam farmer who wants to buy a goat, but the goat seller already has enough yams and only needs birds. If the yam seller does not see anyone who needs yam for birds, he may end up not getting the goat because he cannot provide the birds. That is how complicated and time-consuming the barter got. People needed to do business in a better way, or you would still be taking chickens and yams to school for your fees. Funny, right? Very funny. So they turn to commodity money. We can describe commodity money as those commodities people generally see as money. One example of commodity money in the past was grain. 
So let's say grain, it is a type of commodity money. In our example, both the yam farmer, the god seller and the poultry guy would collect grain as a general commodity for exchange. People become happier, but there was another problem. The size of the grain differed. So, if someone wants to buy 10 golds, they will need more grain than the person who wanted to buy yams. How would that person transfer the big amount of grain around? What if grain harvest at that time wasn't so good? We can agree that many problems arose from this commodity money, so a change was really needed. The introduction of real money. People then had to use rocks or shells, then had a real value. The invention needed trust because everyone had to agree on the value of the money. For example, you can agree with your school friends that one pencil was equal to three erasers. I know some of your children are going to be great in business. So, coins were introduced instead of rocks, shells and pebbles. In the earlier days of coin, people were able to cheat by shaving of pieces of this coin in process called clipping. Soon, there would be enough pieces to make down and sell. Ridges were then added around the coin edges to prevent chipping. Now, coins were safe for transactions, but they would still have their own problems. Let's say you need to buy 12 textbooks for school and each book costs 20 coins. You would then need 240 coins. It would become really difficult and stressful to carry about. Playful children may even misplace a few, so there was the need for a lighter commodity for exchange. Metals and coins were widely accepted as valuable, so people turned them into money. Metal money had some advantages, like being portable, generally accepted, beautiful and malleable. It was measured in weight. A heavier lump was worth more. At some time, merchants became tired of waiting, so merchants began to mark the weight on the lump of convenience. The introduction of paper money. The Chinese are credited with inventing paper money over a thousand years. Even though it was not like the bills of the day, it was more like the day's checks. For those of you who do not know what a check is, I suggest you ask mommy and daddy. They found out how to make paper money years before paper mills were opened in Europe. It was not outright accepted since people still had metal money, but when there were so many metals in circulation, people started leaving their money with goldsmiths who issue notes stating how many metals are with them. Can you see how paper money is coming into the picture now? In conclusion, we will be talking about paper money again in my next video. So, if you like this video, watch out for my next one. Like and share with your children. And you can also subscribe to my channel, join my Facebook page and drop your views and comments. And yes, just to remind you, these videos are for parents and for kids as well. So, you can watch it together and you can share this video with your kids. So, till next time. Be very motivated because I really want to make your children very successful in life.